Right. Let's come to order. I just really need to speak like an old. Yes, sir. President Radinsky. Present. Councilperson Anders. Here. Councilperson Farrell. Here. Councilperson Carroll. Here. Councilperson Meese. Here. Councilperson Charles. Here. Councilperson Nath. Present. Mr. President, other members of council, other persons present tonight also are <laughs> Mayor Jeffrey Reed, Chair and Council Person Noah Markle, Solicitor Robert Kravitz. To my left, Assistant Board Manager and Treasurer Sharon Diamond. To my right, Shelley Weaver, Administrative Assistant and Recording Secretary, and Paul Williams, Borough Manager. Mr. President, you do have a quorum established to hold the meeting this evening. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Let's just take a moment for a silent reflection or prayer before we begin. Thank you. Let's have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. First is the review and approval of council minutes from the meeting of April 4th, 2016. Members of council have had that in their packet since uh, the end of last week. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. There's no discussion. All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Brings us to uh, item three on the agenda, public comment period. So Mr. Griner here, would you like to give the DHML report? Good evening, folks. Uh, last month, we only had 20 calls. We had four automatic alarms, one gas leak, five medical assists, uh, seven MBAs without extrication, one structure fire, one smoke in the structure, one traffic control. We went to Middle Creek Township once, Middle, Middleburg Borough once, Monroe Township twice, Penn Township four times, Seelenco Borough 11 times, and Union Township once for an estimated loss of zero. We had a staff count of 78 men for a total of 34.9 man hours. Any questions for Mr. Reiner? How many total people do we have in the force uh, in the finance committee we reviewed the compensation? I think that's based on the number of okay. the number of people do we want actually official volunteers. I'll have to get them numbers for you. Even best guess. Uh I'd say maybe twenty. Twenty? Okay. We'll compare them, make sure that we have the right number. Well they give a list to the insurance carrier. They have to verify that each year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of things. Um, on the gray sheet, since uh, Gary's here, would just like to call out that the uh, that DHNL was awarded the Community Spirit Award from the uh, Rotary Club, and just want to acknowledge that. The second item is on the back page. It's uh, later in our uh, package. It's uh, item five echo oh yeah. six. Five echo six. It's the SU senior class request for a bond fire on May 13th. But since we have a member of the fire company here, I was wondering if we it would be appropriate to at least start discussing that item. Well that does make sense. Uh, are you familiar with the event that they have planned? No, I'm not. Proposing. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Rodinski, can I provide some background, please? Please. Thank you. Uh, I, um, more than likely, uh, 
Don Marks is, is the chief and also direct, deputy director up there for security. We will probably more than likely have one to two pieces of fire apparatus up there. And to make sure there's a cordoned off area that's safe for everybody. Because we will not have that unless there's a piece of fire apparatus on scene. Mr. Renisky, but prior, prior to this weekend, we're, we have had a lack of precipitation, and, and in fact, probably some parts of Pennsylvania even had restrictions on open burning. Um, to my knowledge, it wasn't cold in Snyder County, at least not at that point, not up to that point in time. But the borough office did receive a, a telephone call last week from the senior class president, first name John, requesting permission. He did share with me that he, he would have a conversation with a number of people, but he was requesting the borough's approval to have a bonfire. Now, you did receive a copy of an excerpt of the open burning ordinance, and it talks about you can have a fire in the borough if it's used for, among the exceptions, are cooking and ceremonial fire. Um, by the end of that work day, Don Wyrick came to the borough office and we spoke for a period of time. And um, they had <coughs> discussed a, a couple of different scenarios or locations uh, but to have this bonfire. Uh, but we were, it's, it's proposed to be May 13th, so I mean, there's some time to plan. Where is the ideal place? Can, can it be conducted with a reasonable amount of safety and assurance and not risk? property, and um, Don shared with me that it, it would have to receive approval of the facilities director as well at Susquehanna University, uh, in, in addition to security, and, and probably even somebody related to student life. Um, but anyway, it's here for you this evening for information purposes. If you would agree that it be called a ceremonial fire, Mr. Wyrick did mention having having a piece of fire apparatus uh, present and, and attended uh, to attend the fire that evening. The wood that would be proposed to be used would be uh, skids, what's the name for skids? Pallets, thank you, pallets. Um, and uh, the height of the fire would be controlled by the number of pallets that's placed on the fire. Gary, I, I know that you didn't have that much information before this evening, but. Any other questions, Mr. Hendricks? Well, my, my questions are going to, uh, you know, how big was it going to be? What were the accelerants going to be used? Zero. He won't, no allow, he won't allow any accelerants. Okay. I like that. Um, I think the county uh, main director should be contacted mm -hmm. to make sure the 911 center is aware of the possibility. We will probably do that automatically so there ain't flooded with 911 calls. Yes. Um, the location, well, I'd like to know the location, how close to residential structures it's going to be. I mean, if, if I had my brothers, it would be down on the Yoder farm, you know, away from any occupied building. So mm -hmm. I would like to know the location of the event. Uh, and I don't know what everybody thinks, you know, if, if it's going to be largely attended, it might be a good idea to also have an uh, ambulance there also. Uh, as far as close to structures, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty far away from any structure because Susquehanna don't want a bad rap for this. Well, I, I think it's a great idea, but I, I'd like to know the location before we yeah. enforce it. So, I will get with Chief Wyrick and we'll see about find out where they're, because probably student life and uh, facilities are probably going to have a big hand in where that gets placed. Mr. Williams, is this a permit process where the borough manager issues the permit, or do these requests have to take council action? I'd say it's administrative. Um, I, I do have the tool, the, the ordinance, which gives the borough office some guidance as to what the exceptions are. At, at least it's not a prohibited act as long as it falls under being called ceremonial. Um, well, because Shane, as you will know, we're in May now. So we bypassed this without a vote. So I'm assuming we're moving this up forward to make a vote or a decision tonight. Um, 
I, I would like to make a motion, um, unless Mike Coyne's sitting in the back room. Is there anything else you can add that you are familiar with what's going on with the bonfire? Actually, no, I, I don't have any information, but um, we would not like one of our buildings to burn down. Absolutely. <laughs> we will take all the precautions. Okay. Well, so, I mean, with that said, I, yeah, and, I, and I had the same concerns when I was told about it as well, um, realizing that it was going to be put on the agenda, um, I, I feel comfortable, as we've done in the past, I'd make the motion that we uh, move forward on it if we're moving that for, uh, to the forefront now since the fire company's here with the <coughs> exceptions that if all uh, the fire company um, run into any issues that would pro prohibit it being done, be it safely, location, and making sure all the coordinations and the notifications are made, uh, I have no problem with that. My understanding is that uh, this is a good class that's a lot to say to SU. Not saying your other classes aren't good, but my understanding is this class is an exceptional class that's graduating. Um, so unless you have druthers with that, uh, you know. No, no, okay. I'm fine with that. I didn't know if it was going to be administrative or we right. didn't take action. Right. You know. Well, it was on the agenda for a vote. That's yeah, what I have there. Actually, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's down for a vote. No, no, it's down for a vote. Or, or, yep. Uh, six Request on the back page one, five, and five. Okay. It is, it is I'll second that request. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I make that motion unless there's other comments and there's, you know, I haven't got a second yet, but. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. oh, we have a second. We have a question. Do we have to uh, officially label this as a ceremonial fire before we vote? Well, that's what it would fall under, from my understanding, from Paul yeah. Williams or her matter. Yeah, otherwise, it's been good. I don't want to be in classified as a prohibited fire. I'd, I'd like this to go forward from this point on, as long as mm -hmm. the safety considerations are addressed. Well, if this motion has the concurrence of the borough manager, the fire department, and Susquehanna administration, that pretty well takes care of what we're interested in, I would hope. Mike, I hate to pick on you back there. I'm not okay. <laughs> If something did arrive, an amber or something did start, I'm assuming the liability falls back on the university because it's a sanction? Yes. Okay, so we have that on record that you concur with that? Okay. So with that said, uh, would I make the motion in a second? Yes, yeah. there's anything else. You ready for the vote? All right, all in favor of the motion, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Thank you, Barry. Yep. Would you let the chief know that that's what happened tonight? At least he knows it from the board, but he's got to meet those criteria <coughs> with the borough manager and everybody else. That I can do. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. The next item on the agenda uh, seals their projects. The minutes from their March meeting are attached uh, for your review. And that is followed by the Seals Grove Chamber of Commerce. Uh, their meeting minutes from March the 22nd were also attached to your packet. Um, the spy minutes. Do we have a member of spy here tonight? Yes, sir. Um, question on the commons update. Sure. I don't know if you can uh, speak to it. Um, it says some of the vendors will not be returning to the farmer's market. Do you have any idea, were they just not turning them off business? Was there, what sort of feedback are you hearing from the vendors? I do not know, uh, Shane, I can find out and bring it back. I'd appreciate it. Sure. Sam's your chamber minutes, as I said, are attached. Um, fine arts, troll, stroll, is, just for information. Which brings us to Seals Grove Area Rec, the tool of Mr. Reese. Any report? Uh, the only thing I'd really like to say is uh, that we as a board, we really appreciate all the help we're getting from uh, the municipalities, the community, uh, different businesses in the area, the different uh, organizations that are, are working with us to keep the swimming pool up and running and safe and healthy. 
Uh, I did see on the news this evening that two pools in Williamsport are closing this year. So, and it, due to lack of funding. So it's, it's important that everybody realizes that swimming pools are closing in the area and the only way we can keep it open for, for our future generations is, is to get you know, some, some support from the community and, and we appreciate everything we've got. Do I see that you're going to have the snack bar? It appears that way, yes. Yeah, I think that will help to get people through the door. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bring us to Parks and Recreation. Is Megan here today? She is not, and the meeting was just at the end of last week, so I would defer that to uh, next month. You'll have a, a set of minutes by then. And uh, we'll cover part of that meeting under the report from Mackenzie later on. All right. Thank you. The next item uh, regards the CDBG DR grant. Mike Fisher from CDCOG. I saw him very well. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Well, the last meeting we were at, um, and we talked about your guidelines for to uh, take your um, housing rehabilitation and flood resiliency work in the areas that qualify. And uh, we had a number of uh, good questions from Council, and I think we took those under consideration in regards to the guidelines, and we made the appropriate changes. The other thing that we had some discussion over was the amount of financial assistance that the town or borough would be able to provide to homeowners. And I'm afraid that I might have given you not accurate information. We talked about $150,000 or up to 150% of the appraised value of the property, which, which, whichever was greater. Originally, when this program was first announced by the Pennsylvania Department of Community Economic Development, who is the entity that, that administers this at the Commonwealth, um, there was, in fact, a $150,000 cap on each project. Shortly after we submitted, we, we submitted your application, um, that cap was lifted, and there was an unlimited amount of funds that could go into the property, and I believe that's what I reported the last time that we were here. That there was no federal regulatory cap on these funds. And that is good. That's a correct statement. There is no federal regulatory cap. This is the PCD's policy that they want to limit 150000 they, they They now said, once again, that they want to put that cap back on, which is 150000 So I think that pretty much kind of dictates to you, uh, as the body of counsel here, that the maximum that you can provide um, to a homeowner is 150000 Now, with that said, and pressing staff at Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development, I, I wanted to get a feel for where that value came from. And their answer to me was they um, talked to FEMA and they talked to Pima to try to get a feel for where houses or how much houses were costing in the projects that they've been involved in. And their response was in the $70,000-$80,000 range. And they felt that $150,000 would be more than enough to cover any type of house lift that we would be encountering. With that said, um, we have a number of other regulatory requirements that we need to address that is above and beyond what a typical FEMA and PEMA job is. One is that we're doing and uh, correcting the code violations in, in the property. The other is that we have to do, as I discussed with you the last time I met with you, we have to do full lead abatement to the property. All those are going to be very pricey um, costs. We have not had any experience with lead abatement in, in our rehabs in the past because we never triggered that threshold of having to do full lead abatement. We have been, however, in our rehabs in the past I've done lead reduction and safe work practice by the contractors that work with the lead, which does have a cost associated with it, um, but it's not anything like going in and completely removing the lead from the house. So the DCD has not had any grantee as of yet launched these programs and actually done any properties. 
I think we're out ahead of the track. I think we're going to be the trend sender, if you will. And the conversation that I had with DCED is, okay, we start putting these things out the bid and we're finding that they're coming in at 160, 180,000, 200,000. What then? Will you lift your cap? And they said, we will take each case and look at it. So I think what we need to do is we've got to get this thing rolling. We've got to get some experience and we have open lines of communication with your staff and with council to see what we actually see out there. But my recommendation tonight as part of your guidelines is that if you feel comfortable with the value of 150,000 is that you adopt that as the total limit and we'll get out there and we'll start a project. When I say start a project, we'll, we'll, we'll get somebody qualified, we'll scope out the project, we'll get it out the bid and we'll see where the bid's coming at. Yes, sir. Is that still or 150% of the appraised value, or no. is it just 150,000? No, because uh, the 150% the appraised value, whichever is greater, could possibly you know take it to a higher level than 150,000. Oh, right. So we're really looking at um, so 150 be. max. Um, unless you want to go take it in the opposite direction, is to say 150,000 or 150% appraised value, whichever is less. I mean, that's a consideration or a, a thought if you, if you want to do that. So I think tonight, besides some of the issues that um, Paul brought up in terms of administrative issues, which um, Attorney Kravitz has reviewed, um, I think that the biggest decision here tonight is probably the, how much assistance do you want to provide a homeowner. Um, and, and I'm assuming that you've all read the rest of the guidelines. I'm, I'm certainly here willing to answer any other questions that you might have. If you have an opportunity to pick it up and read it again, and if you have additional questions, um, now's the time, obviously, that we can try to address those issues. Well, as the guidelines are written, I think it would be helpful to summarize it. There's a lot of material okay. about that thick. Okay. <laughs> um, well, the, the main focus is to assist those homeowners income eligible homeowners, which is the income eligibility is listed on the guidelines, um, to help those folks that have received repetitive flood loss in the 2011 events or prior. So if those folks meet that criteria, we'll begin to take a look at whether or not they meet the income eligibility through a formal application process. And then um, once we determine that they're eligible, we will be going out to do a full inspection of their property and make a determination as to what extent of improvements that they need to their property. Our staff, CDCOG staff, is qualified to do an inspection in relationship to um, making a determination of what the rehab is, the, the code deficiencies, and what kind of remedies that would come into play to, to take that into account. And if the homeowner is not interested in, in, in raising their entire property above the 100 year floodplain or the best available data that, that you have available, um, and they just want their property fixed up and bring up some of the utilities like mechanicals and electrical above the 100 year floodplain, we will be engaged in doing all that work right up approving it with the homeowner alike. If the homeowner also wants to have their house raised above the 100 year floodplain, then we'll be hiring an engineer to help us to evaluate the structural integrity and to do a um, work write up in relationship to raising the full structure and um, taking a look at how that structure will be put back down on, on a new foundation and, and those engineering costs would be a part of the, the cap? The, no, those engineering costs would be separate from the cap. They would be funded out of your grant, and they would be funded by way of a, of a professional service agreement that we have not submitted to you yet. What I wanted to do is get the guidelines taken care of, and then I wanted to try to get this moving out in the streets and then at the next meeting, we would present to you our professional service agreement. And we would like to move forward now with good faith, knowing that in all probability we'll, we'll be able to work that out because it's already budgeted in your grant, um, those costs. 
So that's what we would like to do. So after, yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. So so after after we get the um, property scoped out of what's actually going to happen, and we get the appropriate permits, and maybe we have to come here for zoning approval or that sort of thing. Um, after we take care of all those administrative items, we will then put the project out to bid to a list of pre-approved contractors. And that list of pre-approved contractors will be a process that CEDACOG will vet, go through it, a screening process for contractors who are, who are interested in the, to work in the program. And basically, what we're looking for is contractors that are obviously legitimate contractors. They have references that we can check out. They're carrying the million dollar um, liability insurance um, that they obviously have the work experience and, and, and the understanding. They also have the appropriate credentials like registered with the Attorney General and also because we're working with lead, making sure that they have the appropriate lead certifications through the state and the like. And then at that point, um, we'll have a list of, of contractors that we'll bring to council for your approval and then we'll, we'll list that, give that list of approved contractors to the homeowner and we'll put that out to bid to that small list of contractors and then we will receive the bids back, we will review the bids, we will then recommend them to the homeowner. The homeowner is actually going to be the party of the contract with the contractor the borough is not going to be a party of the contract. So it will be a two-party contract, which lists the borough in the contract in relationship to what your role is, which is really kind of the banker. It will list our role, which has some um, inspection services roles and some other things that we're, we're going to have authorization to do. We will award the contract, then the work will begin after the appropriate permits are secured, and we will then have payouts and at that point we will be submitting those payouts to the borough for administrative approval and then we'll draw those funds down through your IDAS system much like you do under your community development block grant program and then the project's finished and hopefully happy homeowner happy contractor and happy council um, we're there involved with mitigating any problem issues that may occur in relationship to contractor, homeowner, disagreements of what should occur. Um, that is really a lot of what our role will be in, in the process besides all the other upfront scoping things out that we need to do. And, and the various documents that we shared with your administration as well as with your solicitor includes the um, supportive service agreement, I'm sorry, the service agreement which basically outlines Homeowner, you agree that you're going to get these funds, and in exchange, you're going to do this to your house, and you're going to allow CEDACOG to come on board, and you're going to indemnify the borough, and you're going to indemnify us, and you're going to um, promise that you're not going to sell your house for five years. If you do, then you're going to pay a portion of that back, and then we're going to supplement that with a promissory note, and also a mortgage that will be filed on behalf of the borough so that if they do decide to sell their house within that five year period, there's a mechanism to be able to collect on, on that because of the mortgage that's filed. Um, we really don't care in relationship to what lien position that you're in. I, I say that we, that's my discussion. If council says, oh no, we wanna be first lien position, then we'll have to be doing searches and then I don't think we'll be getting rid of the money because I'm sure a lot of these people have mortgages on their properties. Um, so that's pretty much, I think, pretty much in a summary that I, um, I hope I didn't miss any major piece, but that's boiled down in really quick. And whoever wants to ask a question, Tim, this question. If someone wants to move their breaker box from the basement of a foot and a half above the 100 year floodplain, yep. That's so you'll check for all the code violations and the lead yep. stipulations kick in too? Yep. So a $2,500 job could turn into $25,000? No, no. Um, if the rehab, we're not raising the property. Yeah. All they want to do is fix up and we're going to move some of the utilities. If that cost is under $25,000, we don't have to do a full lead abatement. Okay. But we do have to do some what is called lead reduction. 
Um, we had to reduce the lead risk in the house. What that means is that on friction impact surfaces, like doors, we may be replacing doors, we may be replacing windows. Um, that's the type of lower level lead reduction work that we have to do under the $25,000 or less. Now, we also wrote it into the guidelines that the homeowner will also be eligible for another 10 grand to do <coughs> prescribed lead work. And by the way, these are not our regulations, these are the type of regulations. So if we lift the house, then it all, obviously we're gonna be over 25,000. That's where the full lead abatement stuff comes into play. And I don't know what the cost is gonna be there, to be quite honest with you, because we never did a complete removing all the lead in the house. I can tell you that in our rehab activity that we have going on now throughout the region, when we're just doing the under 25,000 and we're doing some lead reduction, we're averaging about seven grand that that adds to the cost of the project. Uh, replacing windows, doing friction and impact surfaces and that sort of thing. Um, in regards to the lead testing and everything, my staff has certification through the state and we have the appropriate testing uh, equipment to be able to test for lead we write the report up as to the appropriate protocol to how that lead should be treated. And then we have to, after the projects are finished, we have to go back and test for lead again to make sure that the lead reduction in terms of dust in the house has been diminished and it hasn't been aggravated because, further aggravated because of the, the methodology that was used for the rehab. And that we take those out and we send it to a certified lab to do the testing and then send it back. Um, that, again, will be all included in our, in our professional service agreement and it will be spelled out exactly what those costs are when we're ready to present that. Two questions. Yeah. One, uh, similar to the what would be the asbestos. And the second question, the person that's on the deed must reside in the home, correct? That is correct. It needs to, your second question, it needs to be an owner-occupied residency. Um, there are some exceptions without, you said the deed as the test. Um, we do allow for like life rights. Um, mom has lived in the house all of her life and she decides now that she wants to deed it over to the kids. And then the kids then write a actual legal binding agreement that says we give mom life rights to continue to stay there. So in that case, she's, a, she's transferred the property into the kid's name and, that, and the kids are now on the deed. Mom isn't anymore. But under the federal guidelines, that, that's considered an appropriate owner-occupied test that mom lives there um, and is okay. And your first question was the asbestos. Um, under the current uh, DEP guidelines, there is no um, guidance like there is lead to deal with residential structures as it relates to asbestos. Under normal circumstances with our normal rehab activity, what we typically do is stay away from it and don't touch it unless it's really fibrous and, and it really needs attention and it's in a very visible public area like kids are playing there and bouncing their balls off asbestos and asbestos is falling apart. Then we will address that, but under normal circumstances, we don't um, we just leave it alone but I can see a potential with raising houses and we got steam pipes with asbestos on we're gonna have to get some further guidance on that in terms of how how we need to treat that and deal with that thank you Hendricks. Um, again page five part five contract participation says the company has to be registered with the EPA and the second thing is they have to have an EPA certified renovator on staff. Yes. And that also includes if you're just contracting to do electrical work or if you're just contracting to do uh, heating work. Well, yes. the comp will that individual contractor, whether it's electrical or plumbing and heating, will he have to be EPA certified? And uh, There's never a simple yes or no. Um, what we want to do here is we want we want to just have one contractor involved, and that's a general contractor. And the general contractor will be responsible of getting his subs 
and doing those various trades. Now, to focus in on, on your specific question, if that electrician is not disturbing lead, and we've already pre-identified that through our testing, then he does not need to be um, having those credentials. But if he is touching lead, then there needs to be somebody overseeing and being involved in that. And that would be the general. The general contractor would be the ultimate responsibility. He would have a liability to make sure that it's happening. In a four or five county area, how many companies out of all the contractors are registered with the EPA or have a certified renovator on their staff? We currently have, um, and, and this number has dropped out up to drastically since 2008, but we currently have about 15 contractors that are participating in our programs. That's actually a low number. We, we need a lot more contractors to participate with the volume of rehab that we have going on in the region. Um, and the reason why we've seen such a decline is that in 2008, 2007, when the recession was hitting, a lot of these guys just closed their doors and, and you know, closed their business and went to go work for Lowe's or doing something else. So again, a little plug, if you guys know any contractors that are looking for work, we'll sit down and talk to them what it all takes to, to do this. I know it's a lot, and you know, I know there's contractors out there working that aren't even um, registered with the Attorney General, they're supposed to, and they don't want to, they don't want to deal with that, but it is what it is. I mean, we had to, we had to play everything by the book with these funds, obviously. You said the 15, are they your larger contractors no. in the area? No, they're, they're um, usually owner and maybe two helpers, and then he subs out everything out. Oh, okay. um, we have maybe three guys that have actually two or three crews going at any given time. They aren't the T. Ross, they aren't the Zartmans. I wasn't going to mention yeah. names, but those yeah. are the two that came Yeah, the, 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 they're, they're the mom and pop guy or the guy with the pickup truck, and they do good work, and obviously the million dollar insurance policy needs to make sure that they're well, fairly legitimate contractors in order to get a, a, a policy written for that amount, so. Thank you. You bet. Any other questions? Are you aware of the two projects we have going on now? Yeah, th those are those are through um, Pima, right? Pima, yeah. And, and so they don't have all that other baggage attached to it. Well, is we're at $250,000 on the one project. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah, I, I hear these numbers that they're seventy, eighty thousand dollars, and we're setting a cap at one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Fifty percent of our projects right now are over the one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I just wondered if you were aware. We'll deal with that when it comes. Yeah, and and you know these programs are obviously not perfect. It's far from it sometimes. Um, we got some challenges here, but I, I endorsing to you to consider let's get this moving let's yeah. let's figure it out as we go and we'll have definite lines of communication with staff and if need be we come back to council and discuss further mr Dan. but if we're going through all the work to do the approved <coughs> contractors make sure they're legit and stuff wouldn't they have to submit their own engineered approved drawings and we could avoid basically part of the grant money to pay for its own, its own, and it just sounds like we're going to be doing with the ports. Um, we want to have some control over to make sure because some of the things that I've heard out there in, in the communities, not this particular community, but other communities, <coughs> is that when you don't have an engineer involved and you have the guy that comes in and lifts the house, well, that's all he does is he lifts the house, and if the wasn't appropriate analysis of the sill plate and how far do we have to raise the? They're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you how far you need to raise it. We need an engineer to be able to give us that. That. What's the word I'm looking for? And structural, the structural component. Well, no, the structural component, but, but the, there's a word for the elevation of the floodplain. Um, base flood elevation. Well, yeah, but I'm thinking of the data point, but yeah, the base flood flood elevation. We need an engineer, a, a guy that certifies that in the front end, and then he certifies that in the back end for the purposes of the um, flood insurance through, through FEMA. That has to be certified in order, order to FEMA to, um, to recognize that. And that's another thing that, that we would like to make sure that we're doing. You have a 100-year <coughs> floodplain right now that's official, but many of our communities, and I think this community is included, 
that there is a best available data that out there that is different from the 100 year flood plan, which could possibly be completely different from what your current flood, flood uh, map is. And so we want to make sure if we're putting public dollars into this, these properties, we want to try to make that, sure that we're getting the most bang for the buck. One of which is let's avoid down the road a piece these, these homeowners uh, experiencing these huge increases in flood insurance premiums because the federal government's getting out of the flood insurance business. So if we're above the best available data and the floodplain then changes later, we protected these people and hopefully been able to give them a, a pretty decent rate on their flood insurance. That might be kind of hard to do because in the past people have complied, have gone a foot and a half above the floodplain. The floodplain map changed and yeah. now they don't comply anymore after complying before. Right. That, that's why we're looking at, at the best available data out there that is not the floodplain to recognize being a floodplain map. It's something else that um, the, the Army Corps of Engineers and others have been working on up and down the Susquehanna Valley different flood elevations, particularly since 2011, and also before that, but 2011 has really been an influence. I know it is in the town of Bloomsburg. So your, your map and everybody else's map up and down is gonna change in the next year, four years, I'm not sure exactly when. Yeah. But you should have that best available data, correct? It's available in mine. Okay, so we would have, make sure our engineer would be looking at that. And what we're doing in the town of, of Bloomsburg is that obviously you have to raise it 18 inches above the flood plain now, but we're looking at bus, best available data and at the minimum we're going to raise it 18 to possibly 36 inches in that range so that we can hopefully get a little more insurance to try to address what you're talking about. It's not to say that we're going to be 100 proof, 100% approved, but we're trying to do our best to really land in the future and try to avoid those issues. The packet has program guidelines, service agreement, promissory note, mortgage, and property owner contractor rehabilitation agreement. Yes. As a group, we'll call them the documents. Are these documents created at CDCOB or do they follow a FEMA or FEMA template? Um, all those documents have been created at CDCOB. They've been used um, for the last two decades. They've been evolved. Over time, we present them to the community, particularly the community when we first started working with, and like Seals Grove, and we suggest that staff would use them, as well as presenting them to their solicitor. Bob has already offered one suggestion uh, in regards to the um, promissory note, and um, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know if, if Attorney Kravitz had an opportunity to read the rest of the document, and the rest of them are okay. okay. Thank you. Just quick question, how many hundred and fifty thousand dollars are we going to be given out? I think that depends on what the rate, what the turnout is. And how much money is we could probably do three. Three. And you didn't say it's two, probably two. Two. Two, yeah, two. Okay. And if people live there for more than five years or six years, they don't pay anything back. Correct. Right. We're giving that twenty percent per year. Now, if Somebody would want to sell their property in year three. Council has a discretion to take a look at that and make a decision whether they want to get the payment back based upon hardship. So somebody needs to move to the nursing home and needs to sell their house. Yeah. The, the main intent of this is to prevent, reduce speculative sales. Ah, I got $150,000, I'm gonna fix up my house. It's going to be more marketable and turn around, sell it, and make profit. That's what we want to avoid. I saw that's in the guidelines. So, council, uh, I think you're looking for moving forward like a resolution. Uh, we could move on each of the separate documents, but I, with permission of the council members, let's take them as a group. Yeah. In other words, we'd entertain a motion to move forward with a project with the documents as presented. You see any problem with that problem? No. I'd make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Move and second it. Further discussion? All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
Very good. Thank um, you. Just really quickly, the we'll then move forward, publicly announce, get something out in the newspaper, then we'll begin to do pre applications to begin to get a waiting list, if you will. We'll go out and we'll start to do um, the review to see if they're eligible, the homeowner. I envision that maybe we'll be coming back in front of council three more times. One is to present our professional service agreement, which I'd like to do that at the next council meeting. We'll present that to you in a week or two in advance so that you have an opportunity to review it and then ask any questions at, at the council meeting. The other t time I see coming back to council is to present to you that, that, that contractor list for your approval. And then the third time is potentially we got a house or two out there where we have some real solid numbers and it's over 150 and I've discussed it with DCED and they're willing to give us some latitude of, of increasing that. That will need council approval to be able to provide more um, funding assistance to the project rather than that. Above and beyond the $150,000 cap. All right. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the Mike Foley Press Collector. sound too out of line, but then I think his question was, he doesn't reside at all in Snell's Grove. It's not that he just files taxes in Florida. He actually lives full time in Florida, and he did some webinar type work for Susquehanna and some documentation work. Um, this is what was an extensive pay scale, it was like $3,000. Um, my problem is, uh, not Paul, but two previous, uh, two previous um, borough managers have explained to me that uh, this tax was for a, uh, a non-resident tax for an individual who's temporarily living and working in Sealsboro for a Sealsboro entity, and that they'd be receiving pay. Say like a uh, substitute teacher would move to town to sub at Sealsboro for one year, but they're still going to file their taxes, say in New York or Harrisburg, where they really live but they would be charged a 1% tax for working temporary while staying here temporary. If that's true, that gentleman should have really paid that. <coughs> the other thing would be, uh, this sounds a little same, but it's not really. It's a non-resident who does not reside at all in Seals Grove, but collects a paycheck from Seals Grove. Um, would he be the person that pays this non-resident tax? And what is, we have a 2.1% EIT tax. And this isn't really even my field. I mean, I'm real estate per capita collecting. This isn't really not my field at all. This is what the Berkheimer collects. But I would just like some clarification. Is it somebody who resides here a little bit, lays his head in the pillow and sleeps here, or is it somebody who actually fully lives somewhere else? Either way, they're filing their income tax as a resident somewhere else. But did they stay here at all? And I, it was explained to me previously by the two previous borough managers that it was somebody who actually stayed here, a temporary worker, working for an entity inside the borough, and that they were collecting a local paycheck. So that local entity would know to charge them a 1% EIT withholding. So at the end of the year, with whatever compensation they made by staying here temporarily, they had 1% taken off the paycheck and everything was going to bounce out. So I don't need an answer now. If we really know that's the truth. Right. Which way is it? That he owed the 1%. So he's not living here, but he is collecting a paycheck from here. He's employed by somebody in this municipality. So he pays the 1%. Would that be any commuters like work at the bank and live like Northumberland? Would they have to pay that? Well, and then again, there is no earned income tax in Florida. So earned income tax is paid to your home. If you don't have earned income tax in that municipality or whatever, then you're going to pay us the 1%. Oh, it doesn't so matter if you live here or not. Okay. If you work here. 
How about, how about if they're attempt just staying here? Do they pay it's it as a non resident or do they pay it as a resident? They pay it the same thing. Same thing. Like it's where they're filing, then right. they get first dibs. Right. And if they're paying more than a percent, then yes. we're out. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's explainable. I can tell them that. Um, another thing, um, I could go on to all of the new laws. The last two years, there have been more law changes with the tax collecting system than. This is going to be my 21st year closing the books. There's more changes in the last two years than it's been in the previous 19. It's just, here's the book, which I actually hardly can admit, I know most of this, rule book for tax collecting for Seal and Grove. I would say about a third of this is probably going to go out the window when they get everything, when the dust finally settles. And it really is some of the stuff is still a little chaotic, they really don't know, but it's going to change. And what I'm asking for is, uh, a committee to review, to review the tax collecting position and to make some recommendations to the council. Uh, and I, I really am leaning to not running again. I want to tell you that it's not just a, some bluff. I really, you know, 21 years, it'll be 22 years after next year. I, I wouldn't mind if someone else did it. It's, uh, it's compensation has been helping me through some tougher times, but it, it's not 100% necessary anymore. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I tell people I'm not running again. My wife tells people I am running again. So we're working on that. Uh, that's the truth. Um, but there's uh, mandatory classes, and the membership of the Tax Credit Association, which I've always been a member, has really become, uh, for better wording, an evil necessary. So I want to look at that. We also have a lot of requests to be using credit cards. I have no resolution or authority to charge anybody using credit cards, and I simply can't just take that off the tax amount. So we have to look at that. I'm going to get some samples from other tax collectors that do it. It's mostly for people who are out of town and realize the tax is going up <coughs> and they can use a credit card. It's worth them to pay 2 or 3% using a credit card to avoid the 10% penalty. So that's all that's for. And to review the compensation rate for the next term of office for 2018 to 2021. So I'm just requesting the committee to, be set up to review that. Thanks, Justice. Carol. Um, we have a finance committee. I'm fine with that. Would you uh, be willing to meet with them? I don't know if you're available uh, <coughs> some time. And uh, Tim, Charles, Tim Charles, the chairperson of that. I think I think finance committee could probably re sit down and, and get that information and maybe make it more understandable and uh, where you're going with the stuff. And then 99% of the time, I'm off work by four or five o'clock, so I'm always available. Even if they want to do it during a committee day, we're going to have our early. <coughs> Sounds like it's going to take a little bit more than half an hour. Well, <laughs> there's no rush for this. Everything okay. I'm talking about is for next year or even the next term. So I'm just laying and I don't want to speak in, in, on behalf of Tim, but I, I, I feel as though what, what you're talking about really sounds financial, and that should go it to really them and make some, yeah. some, rec, you know, some looking at and making some, I have no problem with some information problem. back to us. Can we, is uh, that okay, Tim? Yeah, looking down the I, I, I would think we'd probably try and set it up for an evening when. Councilperson Hendricks and Councilperson Manitsky are available. And I'm not going to, we can set it up for 6.30, 7 <coughs> some night. Yeah. And uh, since you don't need us to take action in the next couple weeks or next yeah, month. Let's see what I think next month at the earliest. Okay. Uh, I'm still typing. No, no, that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sometime we, if we get into June. If, um, if you gentlemen want to. Just write a couple of days in June, you're available. Okay. You guys can coordinate that and give you Paul, then I can talk to one person. <coughs> yep. Feedback, if that's all right with you? Yep. Shane is in the if that's okay. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. We have uh, time for public comment. Others who are present would like to address the council. Yes, <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Jeremy Boyer with the Alec Hugh Brewing Company and, and, and uh, Michael Salter. Uh, we're here again uh, representing Brewery. Uh, consistent with our last visit, we're here to uh, provide you with any updates and, and to uh, answer any questions that you uh, may have. Now, I, I spoke briefly with Mr. Williams before the meeting, and I understand you've gotten a response to Ascra's correct latest? Okay. 
Um, um, additionally, we have some background information. We prepared some handouts. We asked Mike just to uh, just to pass those out. Uh, just to kind of bring you up to speed, uh, following our last meeting, um, Alan Ziegler of the Larson Design Group uh, uh, notified us that he had, he had uh, indeed submitted his, his opinion uh, concerning our waste streams uh, to the Eastern Snyder County Regional Authority. He had done so the previous Friday. I advised us that the escrow would require a $1,500 uh, fee to review. Uh, excited that things were moving along, I immediately stopped down the following morning at the opening of business, uh, dropped off a check, and, and, and spoke to Mr. Bailey. Uh, Mr. Bailey uh, was, was very agreeable to see me, was very excited to see me, uh, and left us with a very strong impression, uh, albeit an impression, that uh, you know, it, was a, it was a matter of an inexpensive review on their part, uh, and that the uh, their engineer would be you know reviewing our materials that we had submitted uh, through the borough and uh, that the escrow board would review it on April 20th. So finally we're you know we're getting somewhere with this issue so, or so we thought. So to my surprise on the morning of the 23rd I, I called Mr. Bailey who explains uh, that no action was taken uh, as for engineers requiring additional information from the borough and the borough's engineers requiring our waste stream. So original communication was made eight days prior uh, in an email to Alan Ziegler and Mr. Paul Williams on Wednesday, April 13th. We were not copied at all. Um, Scott at that point had agreed to, to, uh, to mail me a copy of their, uh, of, of their question. Uh, in an email that morning, I reached out to, uh, uh, to Mr. Ziegler and Mr. Williams. A short time later, I received a, uh, a message uh, from Alan and later, later from Paul Williams, who recommended that we work directly uh, with ASCO to, uh, to address our, their additional concerns and anything else that they may have. Uh, we as new business owners, we're getting mixed information here. This ball is getting tossed back and forth. Um, as for saying verbally that they need more information from the borough and its engineer, uh, they clearly have emailed, as, as, as we've copied, the borough and its engineer, but has not requested any information from us. Uh, and it's eight days later that we find this out. We've lost eight days, we've lost another several weeks on their next meeting. Um, and then we hear communication that the, uh, uh, from the borough that were tell, telling us to work directly with ASCRA. Now prior to the meeting, we're, we're, we're being told that now that we're working with the borough's engineer. This raises an important question, does either party ASCRA or Seals Grove Borough know how this process is supposed to work? Is either part of the party uh, truly interested in bringing additional business to this municipality? Or are both parties carefully posturing their way through our application as a result of an ongoing lawsuit at the expense of the Alec Brewing Company? At Mr. Williams' advice on April 28th, I replied to Scott Bailey and Esker's uh, and the Esker engineer's memo with a rather lengthy description of our brewery, our processes, our waste streams, which, which you have. Esper's engineer, Ron Yeager of Gannett Fleming, in his original memo, raised a number of concerns concerning our proposed brewery. He made comparisons and used data for breweries on the scale of Yingling or Troves, and tried to apply it to our local and very small soup can operation. It was like comparing national beef to Frappen's meat market. Brewing waste aside, issues were raised uh, Additionally, with the, with the bar portion of our brewery. There are currently 20 establishments that serve draft beer on Esper's system. There's possibly more. Seven of those are in Seals Grove Borough, none of which holds an industrial waste permit. 
Let me remind you that one of those is a licensed brewery here in the borough with five times more potential capacity uh, than, it, than ours does. And again, let me remind you that we will not be preparing food, which we can uh, all know can add uh, additional load on the Esper's Way Street. All of those 20 others that I mentioned before do prepare food. Now, I suspect Esper and the borough are, are simply doing their due diligence, and, and this will hopefully soon be behind us. What I do fear, though, with Esper's concerns is that they're putting the borough and indirectly other businesses on notice concerning their waste streams. And if that's the case, uh, these businesses need to know that. Especially those small businesses that, uh, and, and those that are any, entertaining thoughts about hanging a shingle out in Seals Road. This has been, quite, uh, this has been quite, a, quite an adventure for us. This has been quite a process. Uh, we've we've uh, asked for, and we're now insisting upon a meeting uh, with not only the borough, but ask for in the same room so that we get this hammered out prior to the next meeting. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. <clears throat> Again, it was a lot of material that came in. I'm trying to get through it. Can you tell me how you view the borough's engineer, uh, his report, whether the effluent is all right or not, versus Esker's engineer's report? Um, that, that is not an easy answer. Uh, Esker's engineer's report uh, he took the first Google search that he could find and applied all of these potential issues uh, for a production brewery much, much, much exponentially larger than what we are proposing. Uh, we're not putting the next England brewery down the street here. Uh, we're, we're making soup. We're making soup. Just so happens if you let the soup sit around, it becomes that much more enjoyable. The reason I asked the question because I wasn't sure if I was provided with the report. I think it was delayed getting to you. The report from Alan Ziegler, as the borough's municipal authority engineer, I didn't get to see if that raised issues for Q Group. No, Alan Ziegler's report <coughs> used the numbers that, that we gave him, yeah. our specifics, the same specifics that we gave to Estra. Only Alan Ziegler used our specifics, and Esper went and assumed the uh, Brewers Association numbers instead of our own. So the delay at this point is getting the approval from Esper. That's your struggle at the moment. Well, I, I mean, we honestly, no. Where the where the problem is, because there is a lack of communication. We're 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 we're, we're being told from one party. I mean, we're not even being copied on a lot of these things. We're, we're being told from one one party is seeking information from the other, and we're out in one field somewhere. I mean, we're we've got the information. We'd love to tell you everything about us, but, but uh, so hopefully uh, that the uh, the, uh, the ways that we put together you know helps answer those questions. And I, I encourage any of you, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. It doesn't. And if you're missing any information, um, we, we were joking about this earlier, but it, it doesn't require a forum for us to, to react. So that, that's, a, that's a joke, by the way. Is there a member of council, with Tony Brunitsky brought up, President Brunitsky brought up, I'm looking at the memo to Scott Bailey from Ron Yeager, April 12, 2016. That is Esper's response. That is Esper's response. Guys, get a chance yes. to see that. Because we get a chance here, to read that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's okay. according to Mr. Ziegler's memo. The brewery produced 40 barrels of beer per month. The memo incorrectly states that that barrel of beer is 40 gallons, and it goes on throughout that memo saying the information Mr. Ziegler gave is erroneous. And in summary, you're expected to produce significantly higher volumes of wastewater than estimated in documents that have been submitted to date. And they go on, and they're hitting you guys with an upper range of, you know, so many BDUs based upon what they seem to take as, I don't know, they got their number, mm -hmm. 
they're still out of the, the air and saying you guys are in compliance. There's no way we can do anything until you address <coughs> these issues. Mm -hmm. So I guess what President of Council Berniski wants to know, and I guess the rest of Council and I want to know, is who's right here? We, we've addressed point by point Mr. Yeager's. Uh, so they was like, who's, who's right and who's wrong here? Is Alan wrong? In his estimates, or did they get it wrong? Like, they they absolutely got it wrong, okay. and I demonstrated that. Mr. Williams, has uh, Alan Ziegler reviewed <coughs> Fleming conclusions and recommendations? He has. Now, Alan has only just received the, I'm going to call it the rebuttal, or response, maybe that's a better word for it, uh, but I haven't spoken with to Alan since that time. It was. Uh, well, let me, Thursday let, afternoon, I guess it was. Let me refrain, or let me repeat Councilman uh, Hendricks' uh, question. He had asked whether Mr. Ziegler had received Mr. Yeager's uh, report, in which he had indeed received it. It was eight days prior to the last, uh, the last meeting. And there, there's, there's evidence of that. It's been over two weeks he's had it in his hands. Not ours. But for Mr. Yeager. Well, we have no feedback yet from. Uh, Nothing from already. No. Well, I can leave you with this. Uh, as you know, Cubro is on our radar. And we are looking into it closely. I've been in contact with uh, you already, and we'll continue with that to do what we can. Some decisions will be out of our control because it's a test ground. Obviously, yeah, but we're going to continue to do it. The, the main problem is every time it gets delayed mm -hmm. another two, three days, it's actually delaying us another two or three months. I heard. Okay. And uh, the same problem is starting to pop up with the Central Keystone Con as well. Uh, we needed uh, ramp reports from them, and they were supposed to send them out to us in emails. And four phone calls and three emails to Rod uh, later, then two weeks later, we finally got that report sent to us, which now put us a month behind in applying for a variance with the state. Uh, every, every time we get delayed, like I said, two or three days, it delays us down the road two or three months. Well, please document your, the flow of information and permitting with CK COG because we want to examine that and evaluate how the world that's working as well. Okay. Uh, and go ahead, sir. Uh, I was just going to say, you have been to Esther's meetings also, haven't you? We have not. In my, con in my conversation with Mr. Bailey, when I dropped the check off, and I didn't specifically ask him, uh, I mean, do you see any, do you see any benefits? Should we show up to the meeting? He said, no, 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 it shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. You put the face on a problem. You know, it's, it's just like you're you're here tonight. Well, I, I, I guarantee I will continue to be here, and I will continue uh, showing up at the extra meetings until those or begin to show up there until this is resolved. Mr. Rudnitsky, we do have a dual permit process. You know, I'm just going to say, unfortunately, that's how it is in our ordinance at the present time. Um, it doesn't seem logical that we would go about it independently because you would think that we would both reach the same conclusion. So I know that there's a long-range planning meeting of ESPRA. I believe it's the second week of the month and the board meeting the third week of the month. I also agree with Jeremy that we have this combined meeting to try to work through these, if, if they are impediments or, or to try to resolve whatever it is. I, I want to make a, a, a comment about Alan Ziegler's letter. It, it, it pretty much did accept verbatim what was provided to him. Uh, technically, it, it's the cleaning, cleaning product or sanitation project pro product that exceeds the BOD level. Uh, it, it's a technical thing, you know, with BOD. Um, it, would, it, would, it would amount to 330 milligrams per liter or the maximum permitted was 200 milligrams per liter. But what Alan was pointing out, because of the information was provided to the applicant and pointing this out for escrow's benefit, 
However, yes, we know that information, but based upon the production level that they estimate to make so many barrels in a month, how many gallons per month are we really talking about putting down the drain that violates, technically violates this, but more importantly, what is, if there is any impact, on the treatment plan? That's really the question. Uh, we know that there is a technical violation here, but what can we do to, to work through that? However, and as, you, as you've read, um, ESCRA, um, you know, that, that is a very, very small portion of their, uh, their, uh, their response and their estimation of, you know, what we intend to do. Uh, and they obviously don't have a clear picture. I, I feel that we've addressed that. Um, yeah, so you, I read your response. I thought it was very well done. Even brought a smile when you were commenting on their statement about how expensive it would be to remove these products. And you showed, yeah, here's how expensive it is: two fifty-two gallon plastic, you know, cans to just haul it away. It didn't seem at all that expensive. So they clearly have a different picture than we do about what you're doing. Certainly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Others in attendance who would like to be heard tonight? Yes. sight line. I know that hopefully the tree will go up. I know you've had some issues when our street sweeper goes by and the branches are going to stretch out into the roadway. But that first tree, people are saying their sight line is being blocked and some of the parents are allowed to park in the in the afternoon and in the morning and they're coming out of there and they're saying that the sight line is now being obstructed because now that tree is blossoming. The, the so northmost tree? On these, when you're coming out, it'll be looking south. 
yeah. towards the elementary school. The first so as you're coming out of Coles, yeah. if you would look at that and see if that would maybe young enough where it could be transplanted or moved, if, if so desired. I just hate to see it grow and then it have to be cut down. Well, Bo and I had already talked about going in there and doing some lifting. I don't know if that would do the job, but we usually work with Corby. If it doesn't work, then we will have to have it transplanted, but we'd like to try to lift that, the skirt of that tree, make it taller, better side lines, narrow them up a little bit. It, they do need some pruning. Okay. So we'll take care of that. Thank you. I'll pass that on there. Thanks. Yep. Anything else? Thank you very much for not only coming tonight, but what you, Bo, and the others do. It's wonderful. They do a wonderful job, all of them. They really do. And we enjoy it. Thank you. Any others wish to be heard before we go to committees? All right. Finance and Budget Committee, Mr. Charles. Uh, we met, Finance Committee met today at 1 o'clock. Uh, we reviewed all the bills. There was nothing unusual, and I make a motion to pay the bills as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? There is. There are no uh, statewide tax recovery exonerations. Uh, the third item is uh, a word contract for the 2016 street, street project. Uh, that's our yellow sheet. We had budgeted $399,778. When the bids came in, you can see the base bid. And when you add all the add alternates, we had four of them. It comes in at $389,000. On the back of the sheet, Broad Street, Penn Street, the Pine Street is the base bid for 391000 Then Spruce Street, an inlet pipe for 3000 Union Alley, Sherman Street, the Vine Street is 11000 Union Alley, Vine Street, the Pear Street is 11500 And then uh, approximately 500 square yards of bituminous base repair for 17800 uh, John's estimate when we were those there. were the estimates, yeah. When the bids come in, we're able to do the whole job, uh, the base bid and the four ad alternates for $10,000 on the budget. So I make a motion to approve the street program, the base bid, ad alternate one, ad alternate two, ad alternate three, and ad alternate four, okay. as presented in this sheet. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Discussion on the motion. All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The next item is uh, we want the authorized sale of the 2001 Chevrolet pickup with plow upon receipt of the new truck. And this is uh, to authorized advertising and then when we get the bids hopefully at the next meeting or the following meeting we would be making a motion to sell it so i make a motion to uh advertise authorize the advertisement on the sale of the 2001 chevy pickup with plow upon receipt of the new truck is there a second to this motion it's going to be this bid it's not a straight sale it's yeah. We're putting it up for auction. Right. Just listening bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a second? Move and second. All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Okay. The fifth item is the orange scale net sheet. This we had approved eight thousand dollars for kids for kids grow for the bathroom project. And their bathroom project is wrapping up, and they did not need the $8,000. They're asking us to allow them to use the $8,000 to replace uh, cracked and splintering boards with new uh, composite board. Uh, with treks. Yeah, with the treks. 
and this is something that will probably be ongoing. They've applied for grants, but uh, I make a motion that we authorize them to use the $8,000 for this replacement project. Second that. Move the second it. Any further discussion? It's and there's a reallocation. Just want to reemphasize yeah. that it's yeah. not new money. Yeah. No, this so money was allocated. This actual money's been allocated. Uh, this will be the third time in two years. <laughs> yeah, and it's a twenty-five thousand dollar project. There it is. Correct. They're hoping to get funds from other sources. That's all. Are ready for the motion? All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. And that's it from the Finance Committee. Uh, that item six is on hold uh, for more information. Thank you. Public Facilities Committee, Mr. Hendricks. There is no report. Our administration. Um, just uh, one thing that I want to make sure all the other council members know about it. I've talked to Shane. Um, uh, I'm working on or trying to get uh, a, uh, I don't want to call it a, housing place. We have a bus that comes through town. Students from SU, shelter, shelter. And uh, we're looking at it and, and looking at uh, getting the cost. Talking to Corby, if our crew can do the job, if we buy the structure, it's one of those prefab ones that come in and then put up. And it'll be down by Chris Kennewell's, where you might notice the bus sometimes double parking. Um, and that's where, not only that, but the Amish use the bus quite a bit down there. So we're looking at uh, hopefully getting that in place this summer, uh, bearing what kind of uh, workload it puts on a crew. So I'm looking into that, working with Paul and Sherry on that. Committee activities, public affairs, Mr. Reese. Well, we have uh, two requests here. One for a uh, street closure between Pine and Bath and the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, I believe this one, along with the other one, is already uh, pre approved in January. <clears throat> it's an annual event. Uh, I make the motion that we approve this. A second. Then we second it. All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the second request is from Susquehanna University uh, to hang the graduation banner across Market Street. Uh, once again, this is an annual event. Uh, I make the motion that we approve this. I second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Questions? This has been brought up before, and I think I've asked you this before, and I say Mike Coyne's already gone. Um, the liability on that, I'm assuming the home, uh, the building owners allow that cable to be there. Um, but then the liability with uth auth authorizing it through a request, does that fall back on the issue if, in fact, is an issue? It's a cross our right of inner sponsor. So, yeah. so it definitely, I you know, just want to make sure that. Uh, Brings us to personnel committee. I have no report on that committee. Public safety committee, Mr. Knapp? No report. Planning commission? No meeting. No meeting. Zoning and Building Board? They did not meet either. Okay. Civil Service Commission? Okay. Um, two of the members attended a training session down in York, and we'll perhaps hear more about that because there's always something new that they pick up. So um, Paul Grimes and, and Dalton Savage were able to attend that meeting. Okay, glad to hear it. And we already dealt with Shade Tree Commission. That will bring us to uh, administrative matters. Mr. Reed, Mayor Reed. Uh, there is now monthly reports available at this time for uh, April's name. But I would like to report that the new officer that was hired uh, is working out very well. Uh, seems to be fitting in quite well with the rest of the okay. officers. Um, Part-time officer has also been on board for some hours as well. And anticipating the new officer to be going on his own, doing his own, not sure. his own shift by the first full pace pay cycle in June, which I think is somewhere around the 10th. And at that point, 
they will go to a 10-hour five-man rotation on the schedule. Starting in June? Starting in the, in the first full pay cycle in June. June. I think we're all glad to hear that, yes. I'm not sure if this question is for you or for Paul, but um, you know, based on the uh, conditional offer of employment from 7 to April, um, there were three requirements he had to meet. Has he completed all three of those requirements and now he's just doing his field training or is he doing his field training waiting for the completion of these three requirements? He's, he's met those requirements. He has met that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I was sure he had gone through most of his all the requirements that were necessary. And nothing further? Uh, or that everything else is nothing unusual out there because it has some time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, just want to pass on if you would. Uh, the chief showed up for the drug and alcohol at the meeting at the middle school yes. last week and it was somewhat underattended, I felt, uh, for our community with the situations that we have going on. Chief was there and was, and was uh, able to stay for the whole meeting and uh, share uh, the Q&A that they had there. And uh, I wish again more people were attended, uh, talking to Chad Coors. The information was sent out blast to parents and you know through many streams. I was glad, that, to, I was glad to see he was included in that as well. Yes, as a person. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, was a, it was a good panel, good draw panels, breakout rooms uh, for everybody. Um, but it was just, it was just, it could have been better. And people that needed to be there were not there. Thank you. First, let's for Mr. Kravitz. Uh, nothing for tonight except for a short uh, executive session at the end regarding uh, ASPRA and innovation. All right. Engineer, we have his reports uh, in your packet. Brings us to Barrow <laughs> Treasurer. Oh, of course. On the Borough Engineer Report, referencing um, Sales for Barrow School District, no school. We've been carrying this item in the Engineer's Report for a while now, haven't we? Um, yes. We need somebody to confirm from the school district whether or not it's in place or not. Is that us or is that the engineer? I mentioned to John last week when we talked about this that I was going to make a contact with the school district. Yeah, I'd like to close that out, so, yeah. Bring us to Borough Treasurer. Everybody has a copy of the number report for April. If you have any questions, let me know. Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And everybody has a copy of the 2015 CCO that's required to be distributed to each resident of the borough that drinks the water. I guess because it's in the news. Um, on the back page, what is a 90th percentile value under lead at the very bottom of the page? Does anybody, can anybody explain that to me? I mean, those, those are from our tests. Yeah. 3.9. Yeah, 3.9. I'm just trying to figure out what a 90th percentile value is. Any clue, Shell? No. No. I don't know. I'll talk to okay. you. Just from my familiarity with this from another borough, the cutoff there is 10. Ten and above, you're in trouble. Okay. So what's important? Well, action level would be. It says fifteen. Yeah. And since violation is now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're well below that. I just didn't know what ninetieth percentile. Value is. Yeah. Of course, this is not a report on the lot of linings that come from the pipe into the home. Yeah. Yeah. Our wells. Did you did you just say that the cutoff is ten, but our number er, our number is at fifteen? Different no. different number. No. Different category. I'm talking about the ninety percentile values. That's where you get them I drink a lot of water. Brings us to the room manager report. Do we need a motion on that? Oh. Yes, you would do. 
We do. Oh, yes, yes. to approve. So do you yes. have a motion? I'll make the motion. We have a second. I'll second. second. All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Proposed. Our manager or secretary of report, Mr. Williams. Yes, you have an orange color sheet or melon color sheet. I want to mention on April the 6th, uh, a woodshop teacher, John Ahman, I want to mention his name because he really went over and above beyond, uh, say, what we asked of him to provide a weatherization uh, workshop. But he put together these stations, you know, for people to participate uh, in. And um, I, I still need to get a letter out to John. I haven't done that yet, but he did a really nice job getting prepared. I spent a, a lot of time on the street, streetscape project, uh, working with property owners who front the project and getting authorizations and uh, sign-offs from them. Um, April the 26th, I, I, sent, I attended the summer outreach meeting at PennDOT District 3. I took advantage of being at that meeting to, to try to ascertain some information about our Market Street project. I, I did learn who the project manager was. I've spoken with him since then. <laughs> They're not intending to work on doing any design on, on the Market Street project until about November of this year. Um, however, what I did learn is that right now, the, the, the project for milling, at least milling, is scheduled for nighttime. So it's probably milling and paving at nighttime. Um, and, and whether or not that's a good thing, bad thing, um, I'm looking at Mr. Charles, because I know Mr. Charles raised that issue because of the concern for Mifflinburg, although it was different because it was a reconstruction project. But you know, the question is, what is the impact going to be on Seals Grove? And, and uh, not to take words or, or try to cite what Mr. Charles has said, but we hope it's not the same thing here that we have to pre-plan for this event. So there'll be more to come on, on that. But right now it is shown on the program as a nighttime activity. Um, April 27th, I did attend a real estate auction for the property across the street. Uh, you know, based upon the appraised value uh, that I, we had to deal with and adding to that the additional $10,000 which was authorized, um, the starting bid came out Unfortunately, just higher than that amount, and uh, the selling price was like forty-eight five, forty-eight thousand five hundred dollars. Public Works, uh, month of April, they they did the spring cleanup, working with um, the contractor, and, and uh, they're in the process of brush brush pickup at the present time. Any questions on the report? How did the spring cleanup tonnage wise? Did it come in below budget, on budget? Now we're still waiting for the invoice to come in. Okay. Uh, really. I didn't see it when I ran through the bills. I just yeah. wanted it. Second item, uh, we already spoke about it. I did attend the rotary meeting, a special rotary meeting, which recognized uh, Donald Hook and Ladder Fire Company. I provided a copy. Maybe I didn't say this verbatim, but this is basically uh, the gist of what my remarks were. And uh, Chief Tom Garlock was also invited to, to speak at, at that lunch meeting as well. And in attendance was Don Byron, fire chief, and Mr. Heinzelman, who we sometime have here to get the report. First name? Yeah. Drew. 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 Oh. Yeah. Drew. Next item is a uh, yellow sheet. It's an action item for you to approve. <clears throat> the Savage Housing Group, you have a request from Mike Savage. Uh, they intend to build a one or two family dwelling outside of the borough limits um, in the Pheasant Ridge development, which is just to the west of Seals Grove. And the property is located in Penn Township. Penn Township has approved um, the EDUs for sanitary sewer, as well as to pro provide them as a water customer. And ESPRA has also uh, given their approval to accept flows and we're, we're in between. You see, we, we sell the water to Penn Township, so we don't have a direct relationship with Savage. But we convey the sanitary sewer from Penn Township to the escrow interceptor. So Mike is asking for our 
uh, approval as well that in fact we do have capacity to convey the effluent for this two thing as well. So it would be to recognize his request for that purpose. I'd make the request for the conveyance. Any motions or second? Second. Motion or second. Any discussion? All in favor of your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Just a reminder about the PSCP annual conference in Hershey, June 5 to June 8. If you'd like to attend, even for a day. Uh, there's a copy of a pink sheet in your packet, and this is a, a letter from the Summer Seals program. Um, now there's a date in here that I want to provide to you. Thursday, August the 4th, it's a celebration. It's a celebration of their 10th anniversary. It's to celebrate their past and to secure their future. And just to read from this letter, each summer, a talented group of Susquehanna University Education Department student teachers cultivate the seeds of success through stimulating fun learning opportunities <coughs> directed towards narrowing achievement gaps in core reading and mathematics skills while sparking campers' confidence and connection to school. Also, Summer Seals use this as an opportunity for fundraising campaign. Okay. Um, and we took care of the bonfire. Yes. We, we got to care of that. Yep. Yeah. Brings us to zoning. I don't think Kenzie's here anymore. That's a copy of you know of uh, uh, work that she's been doing since the last month. Zoning permits issued and sign permits issued. I have an answer to Shane's question. That number is the. I just looked it up. It was. It's that number is the parts per billion and ninety percent of the taps tested. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. So. Thank you. Then we're in three point nine. Three point nine. With a yes. fifteen action level, so mm -hmm. whatever that is percentage of the other ten. Thank you. <laughs> Next item is Seals Garden Municipal Authority. Yeah. There's no action there. Well, you, have, you have an April report. Lime green. Lime green. Lime green from Mackenzie. She right. put together a monthly report. Uh, she spent time presenting this at the Park and Rec Board meeting last week. She provided some highlights of, of what she's laid as the foundation for the summer supervised playground program. Um, she intends to host a parent information night here on May 19th and May 25th at 6 p.m. That's for parents of children who might be interested in attending. She's worked on uh, different forms and um, she also has a plan to still provide the summer recreation program during the week that AYSO has her soccer camp down at the fields. She wants to take the program to the pump house. And uh, so she has some fresh and new ideas. So all the um I had one comment. Go ahead. Um, the, the question come up and we put or did we clear that up before she came aboard or is she aware for kindergarten, pre kindergarten? Um, registration for that. Uh, are we, is that first? Yes. Good first because what, but, the, but last year we made an exception. So the completion of kindergarten but entering the first, first grade? grade. Yeah. Okay. All right. And also, um, bottom of the first page, the she mentioned the Ecology Day uh, that we're waiting to hear from the DEP. In fact, that letter just came. So we will be the recipients of, of grant money. You might know that program last year as I call it stream kicking and looking at the macro and micro invertebrate. We, we had some assistance from uh, Dr. Jonathan Niles last year and other volunteers. Uh, so it was a very successful program. It was run both in the morning and the afternoon session. So it looks like we'll be able to repeat that again this year. That's, that was worthwhile going by. If anybody gets the time to do that again, I, I, was, I was very interested in how they set it up and, and it, was, it was an extensive program that I was surprised. The Boy Scouts really got, uh, and I am um, homeschoolers. 
they really took advantage of that as homeschoolers' parents came down. Yeah, they, they really I have one that, uh, I'm sorry, it's inescapable lawyer's eye that looks at things. Yeah. There is a liability waiver for the participant right above the sunscreen provision form. And in the liability waiver, it says that the registrant releases them forever discharged in Seals Grove supervised summer playground program. It should say the Pro of Seals Grove because the program is not an entity. Thank you. Now, hopefully, there's time to make that fix. And that brings us to anything on the municipal authority. Yeah, there are minutes yep. from the March meeting. Yeah. Because the Eastern Snyder, well, that's the Eastern Snyder. Yeah. Uh, Escrow minutes are attached. Mm -hmm. Nothing from the water. Okay. Nothing from the Northeastern Joint Authority. And that brings us to the new business. Council members have the new business to bring to the meeting. Mr. Mayor, do you have any items you'd like to raise? Um, I don't know, it's at this time. Um, any other comments from the public at large? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Oh, executive. executive session. Oh, the executive Thank you very much, Pete. Yes, we're going to have an executive session now. Uh, I, I don't know if we're going to have any action on that. I don't think there'll be any council action anticipated following the executive session. It's for the purpose of litigation. Yeah, but we will resume the meeting for the purpose of adjourning after that. So we're going to go into that for our executive session. We have a question. Can I just get a few? I'm from WKOK. Can I just ask you a few questions before you get into the executive session? The time is 9.06, and we're back in public session. The floor is open for a motion. No action is taken during the public session. I make a motion. We adjourn. Second. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. We're adjourned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.